Next up is Mercury engineer Daniel Bryce with a let's yeah, let's hear it. Uh, with uh, I was not planning on reading the titles, but this one is interesting to the extent that I'm going to read it out. Finding a needle that might not be there in an infinite haystack. So what that means is anybody's guess. Hi, uh, thank you for uh, coming to the meetup, and um, it's an honor to speak with uh, so many um, really brilliant and bright people. Uh, when you only have five minutes for a talk, you want to do something that appeals to like both equally Haskell, uh, you know, people who are new to Haskell, and also people who are like seasoned hardcore Haskell veterans. So I'm going to attack. I'm going to tackle equality of functions in this talk. All right. So let's see. What do we? have here, we have a num instance for bool, so you know it's got to be good. Okay. We have a couple type uh, aliases. So we have a quantifier of A, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's you give it a predicate, and then it gives you a bool. Okay. We have a searcher for A, which is a little bit wonk. It takes a predicate, and then it gives you an A, and since it guarantees to give you an A, it's not going to spin forever. It is going to give you an A, so the A might not satisfy the predicate, so you have to check afterwards. It's just a technicality, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix that with a maybe here. But not before we define a class, searchable. So a type A is searchable if you have this searcher that has this special property that if at least one member of A satisfies the predicate, then the predicate is true of the query result. So the query always returns a result, result, the predicate might not be true, but a type is searchable if there is a searcher that has this magic property. It's not magic, it's programming. Okay, first off, we want a nicer interface because we're Haskellers, so we don't just want to give back any A, we want to give back a maybe A where it's nothing if there's nothing in the set that satisfies the predicate, and it's just X if there's something that does satisfy the predicate. Now, if we have a searcher, we can define some quantifiers. So we can define exists, and it reads just like wonderful English. It's like not null search. Yeah, you know, okay, you, you, there exists if, you know, searching does not result in null. Okay, and then for all is not exists, not p, the normal kind of inversion thing. All right. Whew. All right. Here is an instance, and uh, for purposes of time, I'm going to skip over, but you can see the, the kind of justification that, that this does satisfy the law. Query of P is simply P of true, and the reason it satisfies the law is like when you have those two uh, knights at two different doors, and one lies all the time, and one tells the truth. It's basically the same kind of logic, so this will uh, show why this is a, a valid um, searcher. Of course, there's nothing interesting about uh, bools being searchable because that's a finite set. Come on, there are only two of them. Duh. All right. But we can uh, go a little bit further. Okay, if both A and B are searchable, then the set of tuples, the type of tuples, is searchable as well. Um, I'm not going to go through the code, but you can look at it. It works. <laughs> now, we have tuples, okay? But what if you want to like stretch it out and have like a bunch of members of your tuple, right? So like you have like 100, right? Not a problem, right? OK, what if you stretch it out further and further and further, and you keep stretching it out until you have a tuple of infinitely many things? Well, that is effectively a sequence, OK? So a sequence, is, a sequence of A's is a function where you take a natural number, you get an A. And interestingly enough, if A is searchable, then sequences of A, infinite sequences of A, are searchable. Things in Haskell are not always named very well, okay? So the, the method here is called Tikhonov, and we can look at Tikhonov. And uh, a couple of things about Tikhonov. Um, he was a Russian mathematician, and he proved that uh, the arbitrary product, so arbitrarily cardinality product of compact uh, topological spaces is compact. That has nothing to do with the talk, okay? <laughs> you can take a look at this code if you want to, but believe me, for now it works. One notable thing, though, is we want our code to be fast. So it serializes through a tree, it basically memoizes through a binary tree in order to make the code fast. Because if you have infinite many things, you want your code to be fast. 
Real numbers are, at least real numbers between zero and one, are sequences of bits, binary digits. So real numbers, sequence of bool. Make sense? And here I have three real valued functions. Well, functions from a real number to integer. So integer valued functions of a real variable. Um, you can look at this, this is a little bit obtuse, but it's basically, it has to kind of like select the digit out of the sequence. Um, so th that's why it's written this way, but it really just, you know, it's kind of like uh, selecting the digit. Okay. Which of these, which of these is not like the others? Why don't we ask the computer? So finally, if A is searchable and B is eek, functions from A to B are eek. Let's ask a compiler. Or not the compiler, or the runtime rather. Okay, these are not the same. Surprised? Well, not really if you look at line 386 and 377. All right, what about F and H? They are the same. This is not obvious because they have different implementations, but they're the same function. Maybe I'm pulling the wool over your head, so let's check. Maybe just comparing with H always returns true. Okay, well, if, um, wow, if G and H are different, then we should be able to know where they differ. So let's see where they differ. Let's ask. Okay, so for a certain number, G produces one, and for the same number, H produces zero. So they are different, and we found the place where they differ. Thank you for your attention.